Newcastle United secured their first point in the Champions League on Tuesday night with what I'd call a grit and determined performance. However, Fabrizio Ravanelli and Arturo Vidal think very, very differently. So we'll take a look at what they've had to say. Also, Eddie Howe, he is on the FA's radar ahead of Southgate stepping down in 2024. Uh, also, Nick Pope in the Champions League team of the round and could Tonali be dropped on Sunday for Elliot Anderson. Let's take a look. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Paul. Welcome back to the Toon Review YouTube channel and this is the Daily News Show. And uh, well, what a show we've got for you today. Some crazy comments from two former players, but we'll come on to that in a minute. If you do enjoy the show, guys, as usual, please give it the thumbs up. Very important that we keep those likes coming in on the channel so that people like yourselves can find it in the YouTube search results. And also, if you're new, please do subscribe. Free to do so. Come and join this fantastic community we have here on the Toon Review and also hit the notification bell, which will let you know when we schedule any live shows or we indeed upload videos like this one today. So thank you very much in advance for that, guys. Right, on to the stories. Vidal and Ravanelli. Um, for me, I'm, I'm more pissed off with what uh, Vidal had to say, to be honest. Disgusting comments about Newcastle United, uh, which we'll come on to. We know that that performance in the San Siro, it wasn't brilliant football, okay? It wasn't a great performance from Newcastle United. What it was, though, was brave, it was steely, it was determined. But it seems to have got up some people's nose. Look, Eddie Howe and Sven Botman came out after the game and said, could the performance have been better? Yes, we could have played a lot better. But what we have got is a point and we are up and running in the Champions League. You know, we haven't been there for 20 years. It was a very nervous event for a lot of those players. But they've come through it and got a point. And it'll be that experience will move them forward in the rest of the Champions League games. You know... The game at St. James's against Milan is going to be completely different to the one in the San Siro. We know that. But the performance has to get better. The, the, you know, nobody's arguing that fact. But these ex-players, my God, it's Vidal's that has really pissed me off more than anything. Uh, this is what Vidal had to say. He says, I saw the worst game in the history of the Champions League, uh, Milan and Newcastle. How they play that match in the Champions League is crazy. Uh, but those fools from Newcastle made me sick. They are lucky because they only know how to run. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. Uh, I don't understand Newcastle. They came fourth in the league, but they don't do anything. It's disgusting. Uh, they have to risk their lives in the Champions League. If it is their first game, show a little more. They left me angry as hell. Well, you know what, Vidal? Boo bloody who? Okay? Boo who? Simple as that. You know, what the hell are you talking about? You know, Newcastle United went there and they fought for their lives. I don't understand what you mean in that last comment by they have to risk their lives. Those lads put their bodies on the line to stop Milan scoring on numerous occasions. You know, throwing themselves in front of shots, clearances off the line, fantastic goalkeeping. So don't come out and tell me that those lads didn't put their bodies on the line because damn well did. You know, yes, the performance wasn't great. Certain players were, were a little off. But what we will never take away from that game is the players' effort and determination. We as fans, we have always said all along that we want players who fight for the badge and fight for that Newcastle United shirt. And they all did that on Tuesday night. Whether they played well or not is irrelevant. What they showed is determination to come away with a point from the San Siro and Vidal a clean sheet. Newcastle don't just run. That's a pathetic thing to say, a really pathetic thing to say. And quite frankly, as an ex-player um, for Milan, you are very, very bitter about it. Very, very bitter. And, you know, it, there's a lot more than just Vidal and Ravinelli come out with, it, with all these weird quotes about Newcastle United don't deserve to be in the Champions League. Well, you know what? We are there. And we are there because we deserve to be there because we finished fourth in the Premier League last season. And we're damn well... By merit. We weren't there by luck. We were there by merit. But because it's not the, the, you know, the big six or whoever's supposed to be in the Champions League, Newcastle again get thrown all the muck. Uh, and I wasn't going to bring anything like this up in the Daily News, but I feel like I have to because I will. Uh, people that know me and watch this channel will know that I'll defend Newcastle until the cows come home. And I really, you know, when I read quotes like this, it does make me angry. And I think it will make a lot of Newcastle fans angry. But it will also make us laugh at the amount of saltiness that has been banded around Europe at the minute. 
You know, because the the uncultured Newcastle United walk into San Siro and come away with a clean sheet and a point, despite not playing very well. You know, the performance wasn't there. Now, can you imagine if the performance was there and we we won at the San Siro? Would these players be coming out with the same bollocks that they're coming out now or ex-players? Absolutely not. Then there's Ravinelli. Now, Ravinelli, I mean, he hasn't he hasn't said as, as much as Vidal did, uh, but this is what he had to say. Milan did a good job in the first half, but were insufficient in the goal area. Why is that Newcastle United's fault? Why is that Newcastle United's fault that Milan couldn't put the ball in the back of the net? Because Newcastle defended for their lives, which Mr. Arturo doesn't think they did. However, he goes on, uh, Newcastle were little. Uh, they didn't even defend in their own department, and Milan didn't take advantage of that. Milan complicated their passage in the game. Now, Ravinelli, I have no idea. Again, these guys must have been watching a different game to me because we did defend in our own, own department. Yes, sometimes in that first half, we got away with it a little bit. But the second half, throwing the bodies in front of the ball, defending like kings is what we had to do on Tuesday night to get any sort of result out of the San Siro. So, you know... Just because Newcastle aren't the fashionable team in the Premier League, it does not give Ravinelli or Vidal or anybody for that matter the right to say those things about Newcastle United. Now, what Eddie Howe will do is he will use that as motivation. You know, we saw it after the Carabao Cup final when Man United came to St. James's. He used what Ten Hag had said as motivation to the players. Now, I'm sure what Vidal's had to say will have been seen by Eddie Howe, and he will use that as motivation to go into the game against Milan at, the, at St. James's Park, which I've already said will be a very, very different game of football. But it, it, to me, absolutely pathetic comments, childish comments, grow the hell up and respect the fact that that team went into the San Siro on Tuesday night, worked their asses off and came away with a point. Stick your comments where the sun don't shine. Simple as that. Now then, there has been a bit of a worry that Eddie Howe uh, and the England job have been banded around for months and months and months now, but also there's other managers involved in that as well. Uh, but it has been confirmed that Newcastle United's manager, Eddie Howe, is on the list of candidates. Uh, this was confirmed by Ben Jacobs and uh, a couple of other reports that I've read have also said that the FA have got him on their radar. Now, he is alongside the likes of Graham Potter and Pep Guardiola. Now, Guardiola, for me, I don't think will take the job. Uh, I think he's got other aspirations once he finishes Man City. Um, whether that's international football or whether he wants to go to another country and win trophies there and, and build a, an absolute legacy of trophies won in various different countries of the world, I think he'll do that. Uh, I don't think international management particularly suits Guardiola at the minute, um, but he's loving what he's doing at Manchester City. But if City did go on and win the league again this season, the Champions League or whatever... Maybe he'll look at the fact that, you know, I've done everything I can at this football club now. I can't win anything else. Uh, I'll move somewhere else unless he wants to build an absolute legacy like Sir Alex Ferguson or Arsene Wenger did. Uh, but that is down to the Guardiola himself. Graham Potter is is a manager that um, I think would do brilliantly for England. I, I, listen, I know what he did at Chelsea. was Chelsea were all over the place, weren't they? I mean, it, it wasn't Graham Potter's fault. There was a lot going on behind the scenes at Chelsea. Uh, Potter walked into an absolute shit show. Um, what he did at Brighton was absolutely fantastic. The football he played at Brighton was fantastic. So for me, Graham Potter would be the obvious choice. Now, Eddie Howe, um, he has uh, basically said that um, he's, he's not interested in the England job. Um, he wants to stay at Newcastle United, uh, which is very interesting. I mean, look, I don't think Eddie would leave for England next summer. Uh, whatever happens this season. I think he wants to build a, a, an absolute fortress at St. James's Park. He wants to be a legend at this football club as a manager. He wants to be up there with the Keegans and the Robsons of this world. And quite frankly, who would blame him? I think he could do an absolute wonderful job here. And look, despite the fact that he's, he's coming for some criticism from some absolute weapons on social media who think, oh, he's not good enough, we need him out and all that, he will be Newcastle's manager moving forward. The owners absolutely adore this man. And... Look, as long as he learns from his mistakes, there isn't going to be any problem. You know, he he has got a brilliant squad here, but it's how he uses that squad. And it'll be very interesting to see what he does in the future. But despite the fact that he is on the FA's radar, I don't particularly see Eddie Howe taking that job uh, anytime soon, guys. Now, when I was reading the report this morning saying that uh, Newcastle United... Uh, player is in the uh, team of the round for the Champions League I instantly thought it was going to be Kieran Trippier 
Um, I, you know, I, I don't know why. I was just I thought right, Trippier's performance was absolutely magnificent in the San Siro. Uh, so you know, he was my obvious choice to uh, to take that place. However, it was Nick Pope, and uh, look, if you look at Nick Pope's contribution to the game, he was absolutely fantastic. Yep, a couple of crosses he came and kind of flapped that, but you know, 95% of the time he was very solid, made some great saves in the game, made some really good catches from crosses, which we've been critical of him early doors this season. Um, so for him to get into that, uh, you know, goalkeeper position in the team of the round, I think is fabulous given the goalkeepers that are already in the Champions League. But it's about the performance, it's not about the name. And Nick Pope gave an absolutely fantastic performance. Uh, really really strong and back to his best and that is what got him in the England squad that is what got him to Newcastle you know that kind of goalkeeping and the confidence Nick Pope will get now from these last two games getting clean sheets will be huge because it, for a goalkeeper it's all about confidence isn't it, it you know you, you, you kind of second guess your decisions if you're coming for crosses or anything like that but when things are going well you're making saves that confidence level goes right back up it's like a striker at the other end you know who's missing opportunities when the confidence is gone you just don't think you can score and it's the same for a goalkeeper you know you're coming for crosses you're unsure do you, do you punch do you catch or you know those decisions have to come into your head very quickly but I think these two clean sheets for uh, Nick Pope will have done him the world of good so well done to Nick Pope in the uh, Champions League team of the round and finally, could Sandro Tonali be dropped for the game at Sheffield United on Sunday? There is a few reports banded around this morning that uh, Eddie Howe may well be thinking about bringing Elliot Anderson in for the game and leaving Tonali out. Now, this could be a, a different reasons. You know, Tonali did have an ice pack on his ankle uh, when he came off at the San Siro. That's sometimes normal. You take a knock during the game, you put an ice pack on um, in the dressing room if you played all the game or if you're sub, you'll put one on uh, when you come off. But that can be quite normal. But we know that Tonali, you know, is still settling in. He's played, you know, five games for Newcastle United. All right. You know, look at the way the Milan fans love this guy, right? That proves to me that this is a real, real player. And then people start having digs at him saying, oh, you know, he's, he's crying about Milan again, saying that he won't rule out going back. Well, of course not. It's his home club. So sometime in the future, he hasn't ruled going back. So that, that's not crying about you. That's your home team, the team you've grew up loving and you've got to play for. You're not going to rule out going back at some point, maybe to finish your career. But he's got to be given a chance in uh, in England. But my only concern, you know, this is Eddie Howe's decision at the end of the day, but, you know, what would it do to Tonali's confidence if he is left out? You know, is he strong enough to take that decision? Or do you think that, you know, he should be given a little longer on the pitch? Because... I think Eddie Howe is still trying to work out the best places to put Bruno and Tonali. Bruno seems to be getting back to his old self again. He, he looks great. But Tonali just doesn't seem to know what position to stay in. He was drifting out left to Anthony Gordon's position on Tuesday night. Um, you know, and then he was... I don't have a problem with his physicality. He, he looked like he was proper up for the game. Uh, but, you know, gave the ball away a few times. And, and I mean, you could say that about a few players. But you know what? It's an interesting decision that Eddie's got to make. Um, for me, I'd like to see a change of formation. I don't think we're going to see that, but hey-ho. Uh, but anyway, you can uh, catch us tonight live at 7 o'clock. If you're watching this on Thursday afternoon, 7 o'clock tonight, uh, we will have the match preview with me, uh, Billy and Alex. Uh, we'll take a deep dive into this more, see what our team predictions and score predictions are. Of course, take part in the show in the live chat as well with your predictions. Uh, but there you go, guys. That is the daily news for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed the show, please don't forget to give it the thumbs up before you disappear. And of course, if you're new to the channel, uh, hit that subscribe button and come and be part of our wonderful community here on the Toon Review. Free to do so, but don't forget to hit the notification bell, which will let you know when we schedule any live shows or we upload any videos such as this one today. But in the meantime, guys, have a wonderful Thursday. Leave your comments below, and we'll see you very soon. Cheers.